Hello and welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day we unlock the narratives of technology and explore how it intersects with our daily lives and shapes our future, both in and out of the workplace. But I'm your host, Neil C. Hughes, and once again, I'm ready to guide you on yet another deep dive into the world of innovation, and I've got the perfect guest today to join us. His name is Michael Newcity, and he's the Chief Innovation Officer and President of ArcBest Technologies. Now, when you think of logistics, you might not immediately think of cutting-edge technology or disruptive innovation, but Michael and his team are changing that perception by harnessing the power of technology to transform logistics, ultimately creating a more efficient, visible and innovative service offering. After they recently unveiled a new freight movement system, which many are calling a game changer in freight logistics, I wanted to learn more about how this system is reshaping how freight is loaded and unloaded and transferred in warehouses and docks to make operations faster and more efficient, because we've all seen the headlines around supply chains and the disruption, especially during the pandemic. So I want to find out more about the role of technology and innovation and how their annual investment of $150 million in technology, how half of that is directed towards strategic projects and transformative initiatives, and how that is helping them lead this charge in logistics innovation. Well, we'll be discussing all that and much more So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to the US, where Michael is going to take us all on an insightful journey into the world of logistics transformed by technology. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Michael. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah. Hi, Neil. It's great to be here on the show. I work for ArcBest. We're a a multi-billion dollar integrated logistics company. We We focus a lot on technology. We focus a lot on growing um, a suite of shipping logistics solutions for our customers, uh, supply chain needs. I've been with the company for 30 years, which is pretty, you know, kind of unheard of uh, these days. I started in technology uh, at the company, moved through several roles in in marketing and data science uh, uh, strategy, and and even in finance, I, I was the company's CFO. Uh, a non-traditional CFO for five years before stepping in, into my current role. You know, right now I'm the chief innovation officer for ArcBest and I'm the president of ArcBest Technologies, a, a wholly owned um, subsidiary of ArcBest. Um, and in that role, my focus is is on innovation. It's on IT, uh, R&D, and, and data science. And so that's that about sums that up. Fantastic. And I'm looking forward to diving in a little bit deep on all the things that you do today. But for people that are listening to this podcast anywhere in the world, they're hearing about ArcBest for the very first time, who maybe they don't associate words like technology and innovation alongside shipping and logistics. Can you give me an overview of ArcBest, what it is, and how you're using technology to innovate with within the logistics industry and also how it fits into the company's broader business strategy? Because I think there's a great story here. Yeah, I think so too. You know, our company has been focused, uh, you know, since the 1920s on delivering supply chain solutions for uh, for our customers. Starting out as a just a, a local, regional uh, trucking company, growing its North American footprint, and then offering a range of logistics and supply chain solutions really globally. Um, you know, I've been with the company since the 1990s, but even before then, we were innovating. I think about uh, our first uh, our first computer acquisition back in the 1960s. It was a mainframe and one of the first uh, in the country to adopt one. And, you know, what's interesting was our, our the business leaders, the tech leaders at the time felt like we're never going to use all this. So let's start a separate, se- separate subsidiary and let's... Uh, Let's sell the excess computing power. And so we were doing cloud back in the 1960s before we were talking about cloud. Um, You know, fast forward to when I uh, came into the company in the 1990s. I remember sitting in an office and uh, we were talking about the web, the, the internet that was coming online. And there was a discussion about how there was a huge push, uh, really more around marketing um, around uh, the web was becoming the worldwide yellow pages. And we made a decision 
to say, let's look at some of these technologies that we've developed internally, the, the things that are uh, and the tools that our, our employees are using, and how do we front end these technologies at, uh, for our customers to use. And so we were the, really the, the first uh, trucking company to offer online tracking to customers because of that philosophy that we wanted to go quicker on offering function. So we were, we were going digital back then before we were talking about going digital. And so I, you know, I've got, you know, Neil, there's other examples I could mention, um, numerous examples, but I think our focus has always been about putting the customer, um, in the driver's seat. It's been about looking at the various technologies and looking at the economies and saying, you know, that's something we can use internally, but how could we monetize that? How could we um, offer that up in a, in a different way? And so that's really been our history. And one of the things that put you on my radar was, I think you recently unveiled the Volks Freight Movement System, which essentially is a blend of hardware and software. And that got me interested in the tech angle there. So can you elaborate on on how this system works and how its technology is transforming the way freight is handled in everything from warehouses and docks, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you know, Vox is another one of those examples where we were looking at ways to um, innovate in uh, in the warehouse and across dock environment. You know, our industry has been handling freight really the same way for decades. And we wanted to think about the chess pieces, right, involved uh, in doing that not just the software. There's a lot of focus on software innovation in our industry. We want to look at the the engineering, the aspect of it, the the new material handling that can be combined. So so Vox is a it's a stack of innovation. Um, as you mentioned, there's a there's a new hardware component that is almost like a sleeve that uh, goes into uh, uh, the, the 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 truck, the the van, the pup. Um, and is a and encapsulates all the freight uh, in that truckload. It can be moved in and out uh, within minutes. Um, it can be accessed in a 360 type format where you can load and unload uh, this mobile platform uh, in just a matter of minutes. And then there's software that really optimizes that movement. And you think about it, you got if you've got three or four or five of these, mobile platforms all loaded with freight there's a there's a law of permutations that takes place here in terms of the ability to optimize the movement between those devices and so the software uh, enables that it kind of supercharges uh, uh, that movement and, and that maneuvering uh, for the, the the freight movement and then it also connects to a warehouse management system or a warehouse execution system where all the visibility on what's happening uh, between those mobile platforms and what might be happening within the warehouse and and all the people involved in that. And speaking of people, for all those people on the ground who might not be tech savvy, some might even be resistant or wary of tech-based changes in their industry, how does the integration work and, and how does it help warehouse managers and dock supervisors streamline tasks? Yeah, so... Really, what's happening there is it 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 the the software is all API driven, yeah. so it it's, it can connect up to existing warehouse management systems or warehouse execution system. And then for smaller operators, the software can actually even serve as a lightweight uh, WMS. Um, they understand uh, what's coming in, what's leaving. You know, one component that I I did not mention was there's also tracking technology within these mobile platforms that enables them to have kind of real-time visibility uh, on uh, anything on that mobile platform as it moves through the supply chain. And so those things really help out on the connecti- level, the lightweight connectivity, the tracking technology, and it's just the transparency and visibility of what's, what's happening in their warehouse. And I'm glad you mentioned that because before you came on the podcast today, I was reading about how the proprietary tracking technology used in this provides that real-time visibility that you just mentioned. So again, can you explain how this tech works and and essentially how it contributes to efficiency in the freight movement space? Because again, it's a big topic right now, isn't it? Yeah. So a couple of points on that, I would say on the tracking technology itself, you know, you've got this device, it's cellular, it's GPS enabled. 
It's connected to a mobile platform. Um, there's a built-in uh, energy harvester uh, within that technology. So it, 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 uh, it, it, the, the battery life is, is very, very long. So I think one of the issues with, with tracking and visibility in the supply chain is this, to put a, to put a, say like an active RFID tag or some other, um, battery operated tracking technology on an individual shipment is very cost prohibitive. There's not a lot of margin in an individual shipment, but if you can spread that cost across a lot of shipments. So for example, you might have 20 or 30 or 50 shipments on a mobile platform and you can spread the cost of that tracking technology across to all of them. And where the great thing is wherever that mobile platform is located and those, and it's associated with those shipments, whether it's on the back of a truckload uh, being transported from uh, Las Vegas to Boston, or it's, it's on a container or it's sitting in a warehouse floor, that shipment is 24 seven track and it connects up to some software that we built or we can uh, send that tracking uh, updates via API to whatever software our, our customers want us to connect with. So that's that's one aspect of it that's really, really critical. The other thing that you mentioned on, on, on efficiency, that software, the Vox software, because it is looking at the best um, loading uh, for a mobile platform, there's a sustainability component here where, where it can enable uh, a tighter load um, uh, that it can really uh, take advantage of the capacity of a truckload um, shipment, and so you know there's just a lot of opportunity there to 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 for sustainability improvement as well. And I also read that you have a hundred and fifty million dollar annual investment in technology, with half of it going towards strategic projects and transformative initiatives. So. I'm not sure how much you can share, but is there anything you can share around other key projects or technologies that have been resulted from Artbester's innovative mindset that you have there? Yeah, I think one thing for me, you know, when I came into the, my current role, I was I'd come in as CFO and I spent a year as uh, CFO and CIO uh, before that, and we really were looking at trying to take. Um, the existing technology spend and, just, and take it from the back office to the front office. We really wanted to to, to double down on um, innovation in that in that move. And so when we looked at that spend, and, and it was 150 million then. This was in 2015, 2014. We were trying to understand, okay, how much of this spend is is just run the business spend? How much of it is uh, we have to just in an extra an additional dollar uh, to uh, for that next uh, aspect of revenue, and we really looked at the run the business cost on that spend, and we realized that we were meeting benchmarks where we were spending kind of at or below the market in terms of just run the business, which was a good thing um, because we could invest more in innovation. So we we keep a lot of that tracked. The other thing that we do, Neil, is. We've tried to understand in a very deep way about how all of that spend is connected to our strategy. We have about uh, you know 18 to 22 initiatives going on within the company across the business units across ArcBest, and every one of those initiatives has some technology or innovation component to them. And so we we link those, we link that spend. Uh, a lot of the technologies that we've developed around. Uh, dynamic pricing of freight, um, uh, our pick and pick up and delivery route optimization technology, things that we're doing in shipment visibility, um, the ability to reroute in transit shipments. All of those technologies um, started really with an idea about an, a business initiative, whether it was around cost optimization or customer experience or uh, some other initiative. And at a time where every business is under close scrutiny for the ROI and business value that every tech project could deliver, I'm curious, how do you think that your focus on technological innovation has, has actually helped to position the company in the competitive logistics industry, especially during this time of supply chain disruption? Because I think there's a lot going on there, and it 
I'd love to hear more about the kind of value that it actually has helped you deliver. Yeah, there is a lot going on. I think one thing that the pandemic uh, really exposed in our space was the the level of fragmentation, um, the level of of unconnectedness uh, in the space, um, a lot of margin issues, and and that's really these are things that have been growing. We've seen them before, um, and so uh, you know there's a strong recognition because of that for tech in our space. There's a strong recognition for for dealing with the inefficiencies in our space, and and and, and the reality is that every space market is dealing with us, whether it's retail, healthcare, you know, financial services, all of these industries have undergone their own uh, transformation. I think logistics and supply chain is a little bit late to the table on that. Yeah. And and we've seen that. It was exposed in the pandemic. We've also seen that in the level of dollars uh, from non-traditionals, from non-traditional parties of the space uh, have, you know, in the in the magnitude of the tens, hundreds of billions of dollars that have come into the space really in the last uh, seven to 10 years uh, because they're opportunistic. They're seeing that level of fragmentation. They're seeing those levels of inefficiency uh, uh, exposed by the pandemic, exposed by uh, the rise in e-commerce. I think for us, you know, like as I mentioned, is uh, we've seen all that. We've lived it. We've lived it through multiple decades. And our attitude has always been about uh, how do we continue to connect uh, technology? How do we continue to co- connect pragmatic innovation in that process? Um, we we tend to not uh, get caught up in the bleeding edge. We tend to say what makes sense. Um, you know, one thing I failed to mention back on the on the on the on the cloud discussion with the mainframe is, you know, there's always been this idea about well, are you doing this or are you doing that? Are you are you in the cloud? Or are you still on prem? Are you are you A? Or are you B? Our approach has always been well. We're, we may be in A, B, C, and D. It really depends on what makes sense and the mix that we can coordinate uh, in the process. And uh, so that's kind of our positioning and how we deal with supply chain disruption. And you talk about supply chain disruption. There, I think in the last few years, I think most people have realised just how much maybe they took that supply chain for granted over the last few years. And if we zoom out, though, what are your thoughts on the evolving role of technology in the logistics industry? And also, are there any trends that you'll foresee maybe affecting the supply chain in the future? What are you seeing there? Yeah, I think I tell you one thing I do see is that there's still you know we. I mentioned the tracking example back yeah. in the 1990s when we, when we, you know, we had, we had uh, customers could track over the phone. They could, they could uh, call the, the the service center and ask for tracking information. We brought that online, and even in all those decades since then, we're still talking about customers are still talking about the increased need for visibility. And I think if you were to, if you were to really tease that out. You know, what are, they, what, are they, what are they really asking for? They want smart visibility. They want real-time visibility. They want uh, intelligent visibility. And, and that's going to drive, further drive technologies around IoT, you know, Internet of Things. It's going to drive more increased digitization. digitization. It's going gonna, it's gonna to drive some of the cognitive technologies, the generative technologies that we're seeing uh, come about. It's going to drive edge computing. It's going to. It's really going to. Neil, it's really going to be a blend of both uh, of all of these of of the uh, uh, you know advanced software engineering, uh, the cognitive, the edge computing, to really uh, bring about this kind of seed change uh, in this visibility. And but that there's some downstream effects from that too, because. If we can be smarter about visibility, more intelligent about uh, supply chain visibility, well, that drives that can drive a lot in sustainability. That can, if we if we know how we can combine loads better, that we can predict loads better. Um, there's a lot of downstream benefit on just uh, uh, globally on sustainability um, if we can evolve that. 
And I think in the last few months, we've seen businesses trying to work out what AI, Gen AI, deep learning, what that means for their business. More recently, we've seen Meta's Twitter clone threads gain 100 million users in just a week in 100 different countries. And I think that just kind of highlights this real pressure on everyone to be in a state of continuous learning, keeping up to speed with the latest tech trends, etc. So I've got to ask, how or where do you self-educate to try and keep ahead of the curve on things like this? Yeah, I've got, you know, um, I think that uh, perspective has been a, a really a lifelong thing for me. I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. I've, uh, I've have not stopped educating. I, you know, I go to a lot of sources. I, um, I, I, you know, the, there was a, there was a, uh, I remember attending a, um, a conference in, on Laguna Beach uh, years ago, and there was a debate about, um, you know, going deep versus going broad, you know, going deep in terms of what has been historic, traditional, and, and reading books, diving into good books, um, business books, tech books, whatever, um, versus going broad um, on uh, really, you know, from the emergence on social media, uh, online snippets, um, you know, that perspective. And my belief, it's not, that's not an or kind of uh condition it's an and we, let's do both and so i and i do both um and you know and and from multiple places people think well uh we'll, we'll, we'll give you an example we just we just uh put together a employee library we did a a, a, a remodel of our uh, space at arcbus technologies in the last few years and we we if you were walk the hallways here you would see uh rows and rows of of shelves and books and we 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 seeded those books and then we went out and did an employee survey and we said hey we want you to put some books on here too pick some out and and what you'd see is no technology books i said i don't want any technology books because we read those anyway let's think about other books and we got some great responses but i'll go anywhere i'm i'm reading a book right now uh, that my my uh college daughter suggested called spark joy by maria Kondo. And it's incredible, and it's about uh, it's about simplicity in the home, about organization in the home. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I can apply that to things like design thinking or user interface design or other aspects in my in my work professional life here. And so I don't know. I think for me, Neil, it's yes, go deep, go broad. Uh, but do both and be open to uh, where you might get uh, inspiration for that next great read. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be uh, uh, on, on the Harvard Business Review list um, or some, some top 10 technology list. 100% with you. I think it's a beautiful moment to end on. But before I let you go, for anyone listening, interested in learning more about our best technologies, some of the soft topics we explored today, keep up to speed with some of the things you're doing or even contact your team. What's the best starting point for everything? Yeah, I think it's our website. You know, I think it's it's arcb.com. And you can also find Arc Best and, and also find me on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, I'll add those links to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. And there's so many tech buzzwords at the minute, but what I love about what you're doing here is it's not even about the technology. It's about solving real world problems. And I love how you're combining this first of its kind technology and hardware to reduce time to unload and load freight from hours to minutes. And also the fact that it's easily installed on any existing system, kind of simplifying and reducing complexity. So warehouse managers and dock supervisors can more effectively streamline tasks, drive productivity, and also the um, providing of real-time visibility through the tracking, all incredibly cool stuff. And just a big thank you for bringing that topic to life with me today. Thank you, Neil. Really enjoyed it. What a fascinating conversation that was. My heartfelt thanks to Michael for taking the time to share his insights into the transformative role of technology and innovation in logistics. And for everyone listening, a big thank you for joining me today. But is there anything that you would like to share? Did it spark anything in you? Maybe you've got a similar experiences that you'd like to share. Whatever it is, please 
Email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, threads at Neil C. Hughes. Yes, 100 million users in five days to thread, so I thought I'd better sign up. So follow me on there too. But until then, please keep innovating, keep learning. And remember, technology doesn't stop evolving, so neither should we. But thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Oh,